Hello, welcome back to the woods. And welcome back to, well, what is effectively a viewer's request. That's right, now a while back um, in the comments section down below, somebody put, could I do a video on how to make a cooksucker or a nogging cup? Well, I've made quite a few of these over the years. So what I thought I'd do in this video is I'll take you through step by step how I make one of these. And I'll not only take you through how to do it, but I'll take you through the woods, the tools that you use, etc. So let's crack on. So the first thing you're gonna need is your actual piece of wood. You need to decide what type of wood. Well, I've made ones out of all sorts. This one is made out of cherry, which comes up beautiful. This one's years old. Cherry's like iron. But it's also, certainly as it gets more seasoned, very, very difficult to carve. When it's green, it's quite tough going, but it does come up lovely at the end. Other woods, well, I've used all sorts. This one is a piece of sycamore. Uh, again, this was a piece of green sycamore. I was out on a job and we'd felled a, a tree and I had to go over and take the stump out and I made this from the stump. So sycamore, not too bad to carve. Um, quite a nice golden color and relatively durable. The wood I've had probably the most success with over the years has been birch and I've made quite a lot of my nogging cups and kutzkas out of birch. So if I was you, if this is gonna be your first one, I would go for a nice piece of green birch. So the next thing that you need to think about is, well, are you gonna make it a, a noggin or a kutzka? Now, my understanding of it is a, a kutzka is a Scandinavian drinking vessel, a cup. Uh, and they tend to be deeper, something more like one of these. Or are you gonna go for a noggin, which again, my understanding is more of a sort of old English drinking cup. Now that affects how you're gonna treat that piece of wood, because certainly if I'm making a noggin cup, what I tend to do with one of those is I'll, I'll cut my piece of wood and then I split it through the middle. And when I'm carving these rings around here, that's the lower part. So as I split through, I'm working with the rings of the wood. With Kutzka cup, well, those ones, quite often I'll start at the top. So I will split it across the middle or even lower sometimes. And then from the bark downwards is where I'll carve out the actual hollow in the center. So decide what you want to do. Are you going to take a uh, a, a full half, make a noggin cup, or are you gonna go for the half, flip up the other way, and come in from the, the bark side, and make yourself a Kutzka cup. Now this little particular one, this is probably my, my favorite little one, uh, and it's just a piece of birch hollowed out. You can see I've split the wood in two and I've worked on one half of it working outwards towards the rings. Design is pretty standard. Uh, it's that sort of shape that you can cup in your hand, little handle, not a terribly deep, uh, deep bowl on it, and then a little toggle on the end so that when you carry it, you carry it under your belt. So it's, it's with you for scooping water out of streams, at least back in the day when you could just randomly scoop water out of streams. So for this particular project, I've actually decided to go for working from the bark downwards. I'm gonna make a, a full on Scandinavian style kutzka. So the next thing you need to think about are the actual tools that you are gonna be using for this job. Well, to start off with, you're gonna need a saw for actually sawing off your piece of wood. Now, I 
found a, a piece of birch that had been taken down with the stormy weather and was laying on the ground. It was still green, it had only been down a matter of a few hours. But I still needed to make that shorter so it was the size, closer to the size that I needed. So for that, I used this one and this is the uh, outdoor handsaw. Uh, that I did a review on a few weeks ago so pop over and check that one out and this was ideal for taking down a piece of wood which well it was over thigh thick it was a, a, a really good size because I wanted to make quite a nice deep project the next thing after that well vast majority of the tools I used were beaver craft tools so I used the little craft axe which is a, a great little item um, not too heavy comes up nice and sharp not too long and you can choke right up on it for some of the finer work so the little beaver craft axe for scooping out for actually creating that hollow in the um, in your, your cup then you're going to need some sort of scoop so a standard little spoon knife works very very well again this is one of the little beaver craft ones but they also do this longer two-handed model which is very good for if you're working on deeper projects getting right into the bottom so those were ideal for the shaping of the product sorry project um, i used one of these and this is one of their little beaver craft detail knives and for some of the bits where i had to use a uh, handsaw i did actually go over to using my little silky absolutely ideal the vast majority of the carving work well, that was done with a knife that I'm starting to like more and more, and that's this. And this is my little Zapas modern Poco. And I have to say, not just because I was sent it for free, <laughs> this is a cracking little knife. Now the work's been done on it and it's set up with a zero Scandi grind. The blade shape uh, and its ability to hold an edge, absolutely ideal. So the basic tools you're gonna need, a saw, a crook knife, and a knife that you can carve with like your standard bush knife. Now if you are making one of these little noggin cups then one of these can easily be made with the tools that I just described. Indeed you can get by with pretty much your axe, uh, a little folding pruning saw, your bush knife and a standard little spoon knife or crook knife. If you go for something slightly deeper, like one of the cooksers, then you're gonna need a couple of other things because you are going in that much deeper, you're gonna need a couple of other things. Now, first one of those is, for actually removing all that wood in the middle, you might want something like one of these, and this is a little gouge, and that gouge can be used uh, with a, a batten uh, or a bodger just for hammering out that wood in the center fairly quickly. What you're also gonna need for that is something that will hold your cooks going out. The guys who, who make them a lot use a, a proper type bench made out of a log and they put the wood in, piece of wood into a gap that's been sawn out and they drive wedges in to hold it still. Most of us haven't got one of those. Um, however, what you might have uh, is something like uh, a workmate, one of the, the Black & Decker things, which that is what I'm gonna use for this video because I feel that probably most of you have also got one of those. So your method, first thing you're gonna do is take your, your bigger saw, your buck saw, and you are gonna saw off a piece of wood that's big enough for your project. So as I said, I went for one that was probably about a thigh thick. Lengthwise, well, it needs to be longer than your actual cup. So a minimum of a hand span in length. And that should give you a block of wood that's about yay long, by about that round. And that should be ample for making yourself up your noggin or your cook up. The next thing you're gonna do is decide, well, are you gonna halve it by spitting it through the center and use one of the two halves, working from the center out towards the outer edge to make your noggin cup, or are you gonna go for the Kutzka design, um, where you're gonna go in from the outer rings on the top. Now, for this particular one, what I decided was I was gonna go in from the top 
and I was going to make it quite a deep one so I didn't split from the middle I split off from the side so I had a rounded top two straight edges and I went about three quarters of the way down and then I split off again locking it into my uh, Black & Decker and using my gouge and my mallet I started knocking out that centre area so I could start actually getting the depression in the middle. Now Now it is quite hard work even with the, uh, the gauge because yes you're, you're tapping in but some of the time you do actually need to get in there with your hand as well. So you might find that if you're doing that you might want to wear a glove over the hand that's actually doing the, the pushing in because otherwise you're going to get quite a nasty blister. But keep going and keep working down and try where you can to keep working across the grain of the wood so I tend to work in from the sides the two end grain sections the front and the back of the cup those can be really quite hard work so what I tend to do is use my hand for pushing in from the sides and then the mallet and the gouge <coughs> for taking it out from across the end grains So I used the, the gauge to work quickly down the sides and the reason we're working quickly is that to get that depth I don't want it to take too long because as I'm working the wood is drying out the whole time because I'm using green wood and we have to be quite mindful of that. If we're not then there is a chance that it could crack. So quickly working through I've gone down roughly to the depth that I want and yeah it's not completely finished but then what I'm going to do is just use my spoon knife or my crook knife well in this particular case I use the double handed one just to scoop in just to tidy up the inside a little bit so with that all scooped out I've taken it out of the work mate and I'm going to work on a block and this is where I'm going to use my, my little axe to start roughly shaping the actual shape that I want. So I've got the circle in the center, the area that's scooped out, and I want to take off as much of the wood as I can around the outside, again working as quickly as I can. I can't really whack it because obviously I've scooped out the center and there's a chance again that I could crack it. So working very carefully down onto the block can gradually rough out the shape. So 
So I've started to rough out the shape, so I'm getting the overall shape of it. I've started to round the front and I've taken the sides down. What I need to think at this point too is about my handle. Am I going to go for one where it's got a couple of holes through it or is it going to be more of a paddle shaped handle, which is what I wanted on this one. So then what I'm going to do is take my folding saw and I'm just going to saw in line with where I want my handle so I'm cutting through the grain. And then very, very carefully, and it needs to be very carefully, I'm just going to tap through with my axe just to split that piece off. And then with that split off, well then it comes down to your knife and you're gonna carve and start shaping and getting the finer details. You're getting, to, getting the thickness at the base that you want, the thickness at the sides and that overall shape. Not everyone has the luxury of being able to spend a whole day on things. Sometimes we have to do things bit at a time, but it doesn't matter because what we can do is you can slow down the drying and that's going to help with it not cro uh, cracking. So in between carving, if you don't get to do it all in one go, then what I'd suggest is you just put it in a plastic bag and keep it somewhere cool. Mine just tended to get tucked into the, the bottom of my rucksack and then when I had a spare bit of time in the day I could take it out, unpack it from the carrier bag and then do a little bit more carving. So I tended to keep mine in the bottom of my rucksack and if I've got a spare 20 minutes then I'd take it out and I'd take it out of the carrier bag and then I could sit and I could do a little bit more carving and that slows down the drying process if we remember to put it back in the bag each time then it gives you a little bit more time to work it also slows that drying process down so it is less likely to crack that gives you that bit of time just to keep tweaking the shape because what you want is it to fit comfortably in your hand while you're using it. So you'll carve a little bit and then hold it and then oh no, there's a little bump there. I could shave that piece off and gradually you'll start to get that shape. And here is it. That's it all scooped out. I started to get the shape, you can see I've got the handle there. Still needs a little bit of tweaking on there, but overall it's not bad. I'm going to thin the sides down very, very slightly, but those are just the last finishing touches. And then with that done, well, this one goes away to dry. And when I say go away, well, it will just go probably into my wood pile. It's in the shade 
and it's in the dry and this over the course of a few weeks will begin <coughs> to get to a point where it's nice and dry with that done well what I'll do is I'll probably sand out the inside just to get it a little bit smooth and just sand this edge off here because that bit is going to be in contact with my lips as I'm drinking so I want that to be as smooth as possible as well as giving it a little sand off to help preserve it I'm gonna oil it as well and there's a couple of different types of oil that you can use you can use a food safe Danish oil which is something that I tend to use on a lot of my stuff and you build that up in coats and it gives it a quite a um, a sheen to it and it's a good seal that helps to keep moisture out if you don't want that if you want to go for something that's a, a little bit more natural a bit less chemically then you can go for uh, walnut oil or sort of repeated soakings in walnut oil and allowing it to dry in between each one will help to preserve and to protect your project your little cookska or your little noggin whichever it is you've decided to make So there you go, that's how I make a little cookser. Hopefully that was fairly easy to follow. Now you could, if you prefer, nip out and get yourself a book. And this is a book by a very talented bloke called Paul Adamson. And it's a very simple little guide on everything about how to make a cookser, including a bit of fault finding at the end do if one cracks etc but there's loads and loads of top tips from a bloke who's a very very talented craftsman and knows way way better than me uh, about the ways of wood so check it out I'll put a little link in the description box down below for Paul's book So a little bit of news about stuff that is coming up in future videos. Um, I've got a couple that are going to be coming up on uh, shelters um, and a little shelter idea that I've been working on for a, a little while. Also for those of you who are regulars with the channel, you remember I did a thing on uh, bushcraft clothing on a budget and the fact that there are some really good items out there the trousers indeed that I'm wearing today uh, is one of those items as is the smock uh, and I bought another one of these smocks and I did promise I would show you how to update one of these to give it all the features though that those Gucci expensive ones do have so that's probably going to be the next video that's turned up uh, the other bits and pieces that I needed to put that that project together have arrived and I will crack on and get that done this week so that is just a couple of those videos that I've got coming up there's also going to be a couple of little standalone videos on uh, different bits of kit that I've got over in the green craft shop now if you enjoyed this video then remember hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already then please like and subscribe to the channel down below in the description box as well as a link to Paul Adamson's very very good book there is also links to my social media both Instagram and Facebook and there is also down there a link to my Etsy shop over there you'll find all sorts of goodies including my little green craft patches so pop over there and have a look at those I think that's everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe in the woods.